All right, so we've already talked about adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. In this section, 1.7, we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers. Let's first start with multiplication. Here you might remember that multiplication is just a way of making multiple copies of. For example, if I have 5 times negative 3, what I'm really asking you to do is make 5 copies of negative 3. Negative 3 plus another negative 3 plus another negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3. Negative 3 5 times. I end up getting negative 15. Or you can think of a negative times a positive is always going to give you a negative. So positive 5 times negative 3 is going to give us negative 15. So the rule for multiplication, anytime I multiply a positive times a negative, my answer is always going to be negative. Let's do a few quick examples of that. Example number one asks us to multiply. So we might see the numbers next to a parenthesis in a math that means multiplication. So for a, I have 8 times negative 5. I have a positive times a negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative. And 8 times 5 is 40. So negative 40 would be my answer there. So for b, I have multiplying fractions. Now remember, we don't need a common denominator when we're multiplying fractions. We just simply multiply across the numerators and multiply across the denominators. Now if you also notice, I have a negative 1 third times a positive 5 sevenths. So a negative times a positive I know is going to be a negative. Multiplying across the top and multiplying across the bottom, I end up getting negative 5 over 21. So c has a negative 3 times a positive 10. Again, the parentheses next to each other indicate that we're multiplying those two numbers together. So if I have 10 copies of negative 3, I really have negative 30. A negative times a positive always gives me a negative. So what happens if I multiply a number times 0? Well, think about 4 times 0. What it's really meaning is 4 copies of 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is still just going to give me 0. So really, 0 times any number is 0. So if I ask you on this example to do 173 times negative 432, that's a really big number. But then when I multiply it by 0, everything just ends up zeroing out, and I end up getting 0. Or if I have a fraction, 5 sevenths times 0, well, anything times 0 is still just 0. So as soon as I multiply by 0, I know my answer is 0. I could have a whole bunch of copies, but no matter what, if I have a whole bunch of copies of 0, my answer is still just 0. Now the next one has us multiplying two negative numbers. And you might have remembered from the past that two negatives make a positive. This explanation is a little bit more complex, and so I found a Khan Academy video that might help explain why that is. Um, I put that link in Canvas, so if you're interested, it's kind of interesting on why two negatives make a positive. But as soon as we multiply two negatives, we know that our answer is going to be a positive. So in example number three, if I have negative six times a negative eight, I know that my answer is going to be positive 48. Or in B, a decimal, as long as it's negative, times any other negative number, negative 1.2 times negative 3, is going to give me a positive 3.6. Or two negative fractions multiplied. Remember, if I'm multiplying fractions, I don't need a common denominator, but I can take those two negatives. When I multiply them, I get a positive. 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 3 is 6. So when I multiply negative 1 half times a negative 1 third, I get a positive 1 sixth. So what happens if I have a whole bunch of numbers being multiplied together? Well, if you look at example number 4a, I have three negative numbers being multiplied together. If I take the first two, negative 3 times negative 2, those two negatives make me a positive 6. And then I want to take that positive 6 and multiply it still by the last number, negative 5. Now I have a positive 6 times a negative 5. A positive times a negative is going to give me a negative 30. So on B, I notice that I had four negative numbers being multiplied. What do you think if I have four negative numbers? What do you think my answer is going to turn out to be? Well, if I group the first two, negative 4 times negative 6 gives me a positive 24. And if I group the second two, negative 1 times negative 2 gives me a positive 2. And then if I want to multiply those two positive numbers together, 24 times 2, I end up getting positive 48. You might have noticed that any time I multiply an even amount of um, negative numbers together, my answer is always positive, because 2 and 2 and 2 groups of 2 end up multiplying to give me positive 
And so I know anytime I have an even number of negative numbers being multiplied, my answer is going to be positive. Now, if I have an odd number of negative numbers being multiplied, like in this one, the two first negatives are going to give me a positive, but a positive times a negative is going to make sure make me end up with a negative answer. So the product of an odd number of negative numbers is always going to be negative. That's helpful because um, instead of worrying about positives and negatives as you go along, you can determine right away if your answer is going to be positive or negative and then simply just worry about multiplying your values together.